We're excited to kick off New Zealand's very first barbecue series, sponsored by Cully's, Mitre 10 and Jack Daniels, and they're spearheading a home for everything barbecue. Through the series, you're going to see profiles of New Zealand chefs and pit masters, and they're going to be giving you the recipes and tricks you need to be able to do this at home. So sign up for recipes, new episodes, and all those tricks from New Zealand chefs, barbecue masters, and even there's prizes to be won for your favorite barbecue products. This week, I'm excited to say we're joined by Robert Berkey. He's the head honcho at Berkey's Barbecue. He hails from Canada and has been cooking barbecues in minus 25 degrees, so no wonder he moved to New Zealand. Berkey's Barbecue, it's a fantastic place. He does workshops, masterclasses, and catering as well, so he's gonna have some fantastic tips for you guys. Berkey's gonna be cooking as a whopping four dishes over three Weber barbecues. We've got wings, we've got salmon, we've got chicken, and we've also got smash burgers. I'm excited to see what he does, take it away. Hey, I'm Robert from Berkey's Barbecue. Today we're bringing you the Backyard Barbecue Series featuring Cully's, Mitre 10, and Jack Daniels. We're gonna do some barbecue. You know how you always love to go to a barbecue? Well, we're gonna give you the confidence and the motivation to do it on your own and have your own friends and family over so you can have your own little bit of hospitality and do it your way. So we're gonna feature a roast uh, chicken today done on a um, Espedasol rotisserie, which I'm going to show you how to uh, use and get one of these at Mitre 10. We're going to do uh, barbecue chicken wings, buffalo style. We're going to do smash burgers and we are going to do a smoked salmon that you are absolutely can't going to wait for. Let's get started now with uh, roast chicken that we're doing here. So we're going to start off real simple again. It doesn't have to be too fancy but it just needs to be simple and something that you can do and feel comfortable with. So I've uh, already done a little bit of a truss on the chicken and I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, olive oil here just to give it a bit of a binder. So when we add the sauce or the rub in this case, we're just going to uh, put this on here and then we're just gonna be quite liberal. And today we're using the Kingpin Barbecue Smoky Chicken Rub. This is fantastic for just a, 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 not a real spicy hot. A lot of people uh, not looking for that. We can add that on with some of the Cully's hot sauces that we're gonna show at the end. So this is a, kind of a sweet and uh, savory uh, mix here. Uh, it's gluten-free, vegetarians will love this as well. So uh, we're just gonna add this liberally because you'll find that uh, when you transfer it onto the spit here as we will some of it will come off and we'll come back and reapply it a little bit later as well so we're all set here with um, uh, our uh, uh, bird ready to go so we'll just come in from the back side here nothing too fancy that's just going to come through just like this and that's going to sit on there nicely and then what we're going to do I'll take the gloves off to keep it nice and clean we're going to attach right here the spedasol this is battery operated runs for hours and hours and hours and hours it holds a couple of chickens on here no problem we're just going to do one here at the time we're just going to attach this Tighten it up. And today we're gonna to feature the Weber GA. All right, so we've got the chicken on the skewer. We've seasoned it up and I put on my heat proof gloves because this is gonna get really hot. This is gonna make it really easy now for putting this on. What we're gonna do is just attach this into here. This, and then this is going to be battery operated. Our Spedasool is going to be uh, doing a beautiful job here right now getting through all of this. In fact, if I need a little adjustment, no problem, because I can just come in here and move that right back here. Done. Fantastic. 
all set, ready to go. Let's get this uh, chicken going. It's going to take about an hour and 20 minutes or so to get it to the proper, I want to get around 180 to 185 Fahrenheit, which is going to be a proper cook temperature. We'll use our meat thermometer to make sure we're cooked to its proper doneness. And uh, we'll be uh, continuing this backyard barbecue. Okay, so we've had our uh, chicken on for a few minutes now. After about 20 to 30 minutes, you want to take a look at it, make sure the heat is uh, going well. So we're just going to take the lid off. Oh, it's looking fantastic, nice and juicy. We'll just set that uh, out to the side. And what I want to do is just put a little bit of um, oil. In fact, don't need too much because it's looking really juicy. Just as a little binder, I've just got a little uh, olive oil in a um, little spray bottle, but just make sure we've got enough of the seasoning because it's about the seasoning as well. That's coming around nicely. And this is where you want to start remembering what it is that we're trying to do here. So we want to cook our chicken to about 180, 185 coming off the bone on the white meat. That's when you're going to know that it's ready to eat. At 165, chicken is actually okay to eat, but we want it uh, done to uh, proper cook temperature. And we'll use today the Weber uh, little thermal probe here, and that will give us the exact temperature. And we'll show you how to probe that a bit later. But we're gonna take that into the uh, thickest part of the uh, breast meat away from the bone, so then you don't uh, get the uh, temperature of the bone, you get the temperature of the meat, and that's what uh, is gonna uh, dictate today when we are done. Uh, and everything that we're cooking, it comes down to temperature doneness. And using a temperature probe like this is um, just everything when you're cooking, because you don't know what's happening on the inside, how it's done, until you really know what temperature it is. So. That's what we're going to do. We're going to leave that now. It's going to go for, like we said, from start to finish for about an hour and 20 minutes or so. That's our, our uh, guideline. We've got uh, just a nice rolling charcoal heat here. It's uh, probably in sort of a medium range um, of heat where it's not just uh, going crazy. We don't have a temperature thermometer on it, uh, so we can't tell, but we can just see what it's doing, how it's looking, and everything looks perfect. Let's put the lid back on. And let's just leave that and let it do its thing. Okay, so we're just over an hour. We've taken the lid off to take a look at our chicken here. It's looking fantastic, nice and juicy. It's got all the spices uh, sitting on there nicely, a beautiful rub. So another next important thing is to use your temperature probe to find out what state of done are we at? Because you can't serve al dente chicken. Raw chicken is just not acceptable. So we got to make sure it's cooked. And we want it to go to 180 to 185. I like about 185. Seems to be uh, that right temperature where it just comes off the bone and it's still succulent and juicy. So we'll just go into the breast here and just get a quick reading. And we've just got a couple of minutes uh, to go here because we're at about 179 as it was showing. I didn't turn this off, which I certainly could, but... Um, I uh, just want to keep the heat and not burn it. So we'll just do a, just another probe here. And again, we're just, yeah, 179, 180. So another few minutes, 10 minutes, and we're going to be good to go to take this off and plate it all up for you. Okay, I think our chicken's ready. We'll take this lid off, just put it off to the side here. See how golden it is, how beautiful. Just shut that off. So let's just take this off here. I want to take, I've got the gloves. That'll just come straight into here, no problem. Let that sit there. Take that off, put that to the side. We're at a beautiful 185. Uh, we'll just take the skewer off of here. Let that sit. Now, this is what we've wanted to see. Have everything golden brown. You can see actually the, uh, the leg is uh, separating itself, the wing actually. So that's fantastic and we've got the temperature. Just wanna go back now to what we've been using here today. So we've been using the uh, Weber GA. Great portability, easy to use. Just make sure you've got it on a good surface. We're taking care of that here to make sure it gets a little bit warm from the bottom. Uh, we've got this riser here, which makes it a little further away from the uh, coals for the rotisserie to sit in here. So a spudasol here as we've got. So remember this battery operated and works out really, really fantastic for what we're trying to do here for a gorgeous rotisserie chicken. So uh, portability, economy, ease of use. Uh, you can take it, let's make it happen just like we've done here today. So we'll let that rest up a little bit, keep the juices all together, and then we're going to grill up some vegetables here and show you what that's going to look like all plated up. All right, so we're carrying on now with our barbecue chicken. 
And because we want to have a family meal here, we also want to have some veg because there are people who do like that. But if we're going to do them, let's do them right. So we're going to go on the Weber kettle here, which is a great versatile barbecue. We are going to use the charcoal to just make that little extra smoky flavor and um, just bring out those little char marks. We've got it wrapped up, uh, nice hot heat here. So it's going to be fantastic. So what I've got is just um, some courgettes and onions and capsicum and some tomatoes with a little bit of panko, a little olive oil. We're gonna just give a little salt and pepper uh, flavoring on that just so that, uh, cause you gotta have some flavor. And this Cully's product here, the salt and pepper blend makes it so easy. One bottle, shake, 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 and you've got it all there happening just like you need it. So we're gonna grill these and we're gonna finish off this meal. Won't take very long. Our chicken is resting. Okay, so we're just gonna turn those down, get all the grill marks in here. Right over the direct heat. Let's just get that chart up there. Make it look professional with those char marks. We've got it on. Look how colorful. That's going to be a beautiful fit to any plate. Put those tomatoes on there. Look at that. That is all we need right there. Okay, just random, doesn't matter where, just do it. We'll take a look at it in a few minutes. And uh, real be beautiful char marks are gonna come up because we've got a little bit of olive oil, a little salt and pepper. We're gonna let those uh, juices, a little of that smoke, you already see it coming through, it smells great. You know, you can't, your mouth is watering, you can't wait to eat it. Okay, let's just leave it right there. We'll come back in about uh, 10 minutes. All right, so our veg are looking great. They've got some real nice char to them. We can put that right back into the, the platter that we use to season them with, which is just a little salt and pepper olive oil. That's gonna be all nice and sweet, having been, had a chance to caramelize a little bit, get some grill marks. It makes for a nice presentation, but it just tastes even better. It's gotta look as good as it tastes, if not better. Get everybody into the mood of eating by just how good it looks. These have been going about, uh, I got 15 minutes, but you can regulate uh, your heat and your time to accommodate the amount of time that you've got. Uh, if you're a bit on rushed uh, space there, then uh, you know just go a little bit lower and slower. You've got a bit, uh, you're watching it and you've got lots of time because you've planned things out well. Well, then you can crank up the heat a bit more, but just wait till you get the right grill marks and have a nice presentation like this. And that looks pretty fantastic, something that you'd want to eat. We're going to plate that up with the chicken that we've cooked up, which has been resting, and we're going to have a nice presentation, a nice platter. And again, you're going to be able to do this in your backyard with your friends and family, enjoying what you made happen on the Weber Cattle, the Weber GA, right there at Mitre 10, Cully's, and Jack Daniels. Okay, so our chicken is ready. It's been uh, just cooling for about 10 or 15, well, I guess about 20 minutes really, when we think we've done the vegetables and taken that off. Uh, so in the time it's had the chance to rest, we've grilled our vegetables and now we're ready to plate. So let's just get this onto a cutting surface. Let's get the legs off of here and uh, make this a nice little presentation. Not too hard, just take the legs off. We've got uh, some of the wings, actually, they decided to fall off because they were so tender. Okay, so let's go with that here. Let's get the uh, chicken going like this. Okay, let's get this all together. So we're going to rebuild this chicken, except we're going to take those bones away here. Take that breast meat. In here, so we've got lots of pickings, lots of great, but let's just put that in there for now because we're gonna make a great, great presentation. We can just put this in here like this. This, get some nice pieces of
move that in there. We've got some nice thigh along with leg it's sitting right in here. All the juices. Now this. Now let's get some of those tomatoes. Let's put those right in here. A nice little presentation scattered around a bit. Let's just get into that. Look how beautiful the char marks are. It's brought out a nice caramelization. It will sweeten up. We've got our peppers. A couple of different kinds of onion. Look how nice this is turning out. And all we've done is a little grilled chicken, a little grilled veg. We've used our Weber products today. We've used our Cully sauces and rubs. And we've got a whole platter full of people you can feed an easy two if you want to share, that is, um, or make it four or six, depending on how much everybody eats. But there's lots to go around. It looks fantastic. Best of all, it's going to taste fantastic. And you can get all of these products at Cully's and Mitre 10. And Jack Daniels, thanks for all the support to make all this Backyard Purpose and series happen. So then you can take your barbecue to your house. So with our grilled vegetables to go with our chicken, and of course you can do that with anything, just get your corn husks corn still in the husk. Just throw that right on to the hot coals there. We're going to leave it as is. You can soak those for an hour uh, if you like or if you don't have that time because you forgot that's okay. that's okay. Just put it right on the coals. We're going to let that go for about 10 minutes and rotate it. So in about 20 minutes it's going to be all nice and smoky and it's going to be juicy because the husks retain a lot of water so it's going to really protect it and make it succulent and juicy. So let's close that up. Okay, so we've got our corn just sitting beautifully on these charcoal bits. Ah, if we get a little bit of flame, that's fine. That's just going to be flavor. We've knocked that out. Just turn those around. They've been on there for about 10 minutes. We're going to leave that now for another couple of minutes and we'll be good to go here in very short order. Again, not too worried about that. A little bit of flame because that's all going to go out. I'm going to close that lid. Let that smoke happen. Okay, that corn is looking great. We're just going to take those off gently here. Okay, we've got the corn. I've peeled back a few already and we can do this without getting all the char and everything. Just stand it out of the way back of the table here. Oh, we've got some beautiful, beautiful uh, grill marks here. Look at that. That's just flavor. That's exactly what you want. Nothing wrong with that. We're going to leave that there just like that. Now what we're going to do quickly here, we're going to get the sriracha uh, mayo here by Cully's which has got a nice little bite to it in a mayo and we're going to add it on to this corn as a dipping or a bit of a slather on there. We're going to add a bit of this sauce in here and then we're going to tuck in with a little bit of Parmesan cheese and then because we all love hot sauce so much and Cully's has a range of 12 and they go from mild to blow your head off so you get to choose where you'd like to go and there's about 12, 14, 15 different sauces that they've got you can check out all along. But this is a, a tropical Caribbean number seven. Uh, while it's seven and higher on the list, it's not blow your head off high. It's really got a, a nice little tang to it and uh, you can add a little bit of that uh, to it. So I like that for the little bit extra flavor. So remember those too. We're just going to mix that up. And then we're just going to slather that right on top like that. And then we're going to add a little bit more cheese and that's going to be finished off to go with your corn. Smoked corn on the uh, Weber over charcoal right on the grills, right in the husk with a little sriracha mayo with a little Parmesan cheese. All right, here we are, the Berkey's Barbecue doing the barbecue series here for Cully's, Mitre 10, and Jack Daniels. And we're featuring now the buffalo chicken seasoning. We're gonna make some amazing buffalo wings here. Buffalo, New York, in the United States, the home of buffalo wings. 
I personally like the whole wing where the, you've got the tip, the flat, and the drummy all together. Some like to uh, separate those. My personal favorites keep it all together. We're going to toss these in a little bit of um, the Cully's uh, rub here and get them all seasoned up real nice. I've started to, uh, to do that so we can just let that sit in here and get uh, all together. And then we're going to cook these on the uh, Weber kettle, which is a real popular uh, barbecue featuring the charcoal. So it's really, really versatile and usable. Okay, so we've got our wing seasoned up here. We're going to use the Weber kettle. We're going to use the mine, which is a little bit of a dome, if you will, that allows the charcoal to go inside and then forces into a convection heat within. And so when we close the lid, it's all going to cook like an oven. So this is a, a mine that you can purchase at um, Mitre 10. And we're just going to put this back over top here so then we can throw our wings uh, gently on here. So we're going to just place them all around, make sure we've got uh, some good spacing. And we're using a, 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 about a 350 degree heat, which we've controlled by the top and the bottom vents, which um, the Weber kettle has. The vent down at the bottom is... Um, uh, the kind of the ball area and that allows the air to be drawn up through and then that's all going to go up through and across and out the top of the lid. So we're going to control that, make sure we stay at a steady 100, um, sorry, we're going to cook to uh, 350 degrees in the inside. We're going to cook the wings to a 185 cook temperature, which is so important that you know what your temperature is, that you know that your food is, is uh, properly done. So we'll use the Weber thermometer again, the uh, probe, which will tell us um, where our temperatures are so we can completely monitor this all the way through. So we've got that all set on there. Now that we've got it, let's just give it a little bit of extra because we've got our hands on there. So we've got that strategically looking fantastic. We've got the, uh, the mine sitting there with the red hot coals. And then that is going to just get covered in here right now. We're going to let that convection heat. And then about every 15, 20 minutes, we'll move this lid around uh, just so the, uh, the heat and the smoke will transfer it across and um, uh, keep it going at a, a smooth and delicate temperature uh, all the way through to doneness. So we'll check these in about 20 minutes, make sure that we're at a good, uh, where we need to be at the heat, nothing's burning, and everything's going the way we need to. Okay, we're back onto the chicken wings here. Let's take a look. We've been about 20 minutes or so here. We want to go and see how the, weather, the uh, heat has been going, how the weather is outside, of course, too. But look, those are going to be just turned over. You can see how they've got a little bit of a golden... Um, brown to them. They're just coming along nicely there. So we'll just try and get those uh, to keep going. Just to keep doing what exactly they're doing here. Just flip them over. Let's get these in here. Looking good. Again, we're on an indirect heat. So the heat source is right in the middle. And with that um, heat coming around in a uh, convection way, it's just cooking all the way like a beautiful, beautiful oven. So we're good. I think everything is looking fine. Actually, we've got lots of rub from when we put it on there now uh, before. So I think we'll leave it just as is. Let that go to a temperature doneness of about 185. We've got the heat at a good medium. Uh, and it was about 350. And we're going to just leave that to uh, be doing exactly what it's been doing and take it all the way through to the end. And we're going to sauce it up. It's going to be fantastic. Okay, let's just get a little bit of oil on there, just as a little bit of a binder. And we're just going to throw a little bit more seasoning. Just keep that all going great. Keep all those flavors, everything going. Let's put that lid back on there quick. I'm starving. Okay, let's come in here on this uh, Weber probe here. We'll get it right into the deep part of the wing. About 182. We're looking pretty good there, aren't we? Into the drumette here. Oh, we can feel that's just crispy and crunchy. Oh, that's good. Let's get into a nice uh, thick one here. But I think we're ready. Oh, I can feel that's crunch. That is exactly what we're after. All right, so our wings are ready to come off. They've reached that 185 temperature probe that we've seen. So let's get them off into a bowl. 
And again, what we've done is we've kept them on a heat of about 350 degrees, which you can see on the, um, the lid of the Weber kettle here. We've cooked them on an indirect heat and placed all of the wings on the outside perimeter. And we've just let that uh, heat just uh, act like an oven. And these are, I can just feel how crispy they are taking them off and hearing them crunch. So they're going to be exactly what you want to eat. Look at that, that's, uh, that's fall off the bone. Really happy with those. The color is great. The seasoning is still on there. We haven't even seasoned them up yet. And we've got uh, just a beautiful look. Texture is great. The uh, color is just beautiful. So the flavor is going to be sweet and nice. Now we're going to go into the sauce here next. So let's get that prepped up. We're going to do a toss and make it all nice and presentable. Okay, now this is the time we have all been waiting for. This is the most fun of the barbecue. This is near and dear to my heart. So during Super Bowl day, 1.42 billion of these wings will get consumed, and that's with a B for Berkey. So they are a lot of times done in a beautiful hot sauce of, uh, which is buttery and creamy and slurpy and all of that. So Cully's and their buffalo wing sauce is an absolute must. I can't say it enough. It's one of my absolute favorites of anything in the whole wide world. And we're gonna throw that onto some wings here. So you know what, let's just get right into it. We're gonna toss these. I mean, you could put some more sauce on the barbecue while you're cooking them, but we're just gonna leave it simple, simple, simple today. Okay, so we've got some sauce on here. We're all good to go. We're going to do what we love to do. That's do a nice toss. Get them all sloppy, slurpy. Get a nice big stainless steel bowl. Get lots of sauce in there. Turn it all around. Get it in there. And look at that. That's exactly what we need it to be. All saucy, wet, with coating. You just gotta love that. And then what we'll do is we'll just get our tongs here and just place them on the, make a nice little presentation here. With the other side here, we're just gonna add to this sauce now, because we've used the mild. Now, there's, there's gonna be some people in your group that are gonna like a little bit extra zing a little bit more uh, hot. And again, one thing I'd say with the sauce is the more you put on them, even on the mild, it will become a little bit more spicy and hot. A Little bit goes a long way, but don't be afraid to use what you need and what you want. So let's get those in there. We like lots of hot. Maybe we'll save some plain for those who are so inclined to not have, but yeah, let's just get that. You can do that a little bit further away from you. So if you do slop, it doesn't quite look, but at the end of the day, people will know you did it and it's just all tasty and really, really good. So let's just put those in there. That to the side, plate that up. And you know what? Just can't wait. Look at that, just fall off the bone there. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Heaven. All right, so we have a real fan favorite here at Berkey's Barbecue, and this is the cured smoked salmon. And today we're going to do this and cook this on a Weber Spirit 2, which is a gas grill, which many people like because it is fast and it's not uh, dirty as uh, the charcoal might be, or uh, it's pretty instant, obviously, for the flame. And so we've got that on a, um, a medium-high heat here, which will be, right now we've just cranked it up to get it uh, where we uh, want it to be. And we're gonna put that on a cedar plank, so the uh, roasting and the, uh, the, the wood is going to just infuse the salmon with a beautiful, beautiful smoky taste. So we're gonna bring a smoky taste to a gas barbecue. So we've uh, uh, just gonna put that on to a cedar plank, which has been soaking for about an hour. And that's gonna have a little snap, crackle and pop. It's gonna sweat and it's gonna infuse the salmon. And we're gonna leave this on for about 20 minutes, uh, which should take it to about 100 and 
20 Fahrenheit. And at that time, we're going to glaze it with a wonderful mustard and maple syrup glaze to finish it off at the end. Let's let that go. Close the door. Leave the door down. Don't lift it up to check. Have faith that your temperatures are all right and let it go. All right, so let's uh, have a look here. We're uh, going to use an equal parts of uh, mustard and maple syrup. It's a little glaze here. We're just going to put that over. We can see our fish is looking fantastic with the, uh, the, the edges just getting a little bit charred. I mean, that's exactly uh, what we want for flavor. It's going to be a crispy bits and that's always going to taste good. So we just want a little bit of that glaze to go on there and that's going to set up for the next couple of minutes. We've done that again at about 120 degrees. We're going to pull that fish off at about 140 Fahrenheit. Again, we're talking in Fahrenheit on all of these uh, barbecue things. Um, it's pretty much the uh, measure when you're barbecuing. I uh, appreciate the uh, Celsius here in New Zealand, but uh, generally uh, with the barbecue side, when we talk about that, we're uh, always talking about the uh, Fahrenheit. So 120, we've glazed. We're gonna take it off at 140. We're just about there and looking really, really tasty. Okay, we are looking really good here. We've got some nice char happening. We're looking for 140. We are looking fantastic, just what we need. So let's get that out of the way. We've got that beautiful gloss finish. Actually, we can already see how crunchy and crispy that is looking. And that's got that beautiful mustard and maple syrup glaze. You can just see the sheen on it, the color. You see that the board has charred and it's been infusing that fish for the last uh, about 25 minutes to get us to that 140 Fahrenheit. Again, the Weber Spirit 2 acted as a smoker today by adding the uh, uh, cedar plank onto the barbecue, makes it real efficient and easy to smoke. Again, gas doesn't have to be the worst thing in the world. Just get out there and do it. We'll make it work. We'll add a little bit of wood chips. We'll add a cedar plank, whatever it is, or we could just do it plain. Either way, for you to decide, right now we've got a great cedar plank salmon that you know you want to get right into. So let's finish it off here and plate it up. Okay, one of the big popular favorites right now are barbecue smash burgers. So we're going to, on the Weber kettle again, we've got the smash plate that Mitre 10 is carrying right now. And it's absolutely perfect for what we're trying to do. We want to get a crusty outside finish on the, uh, the meat patty. And we can toast the bun a little bit too, whether you like to do that or not. And we've got a great, great full size uh, plate here to make that happen. So I've made uh, meatballs here, which you can check the uh, website of berkeysbarbecue.co.nz for the recipe here. And what I've done is I've just sprayed a little bit of oil just on there as a little bit of a non-stick, nice and hot as we've got it. We're just going to throw those burgers right on there right now. Give yourself a little bit of space because we are going to smash them. Okay, and that's when we do it right now. Just come in there. Make it nice and flat. Get it around this side. Just use your, anything you've got flat could be the bottom of a pan, doesn't matter. Just get at it with whatever works. We're using the spatula here, but it really doesn't matter. And get them nice and thin, beautiful, nice and flat, all the same uh, thickness all the way through. We're just going to let that crust up now. Give it a minute or two. Just keep the lid on if you like. Just watch it and we'll come back in about two minutes. Okay, so we're going to take these burgers to be all the same thickness all the way through. So they're going to cook at the same time all the way through. We're going to make sure and it's going to see and won't take long. And we're already getting that crusty outside finish. Exactly what we need. Didn't take long at all. And if you get in here, just get on the other side here. That's exactly what we want to see here. That one we messed up a bit, but that's okay. That's still going to go great in a brioche bun. So we'll just let that go another uh, minute because that's real hot and sizzling. Okay, so these look that they're to be done. Let's just take them off here now before we... Uh, we've got those. Now, not everybody likes cheese. 
on their burger, but we're gonna come back and do that here in a second. Okay, so what we're after with these burgers, is on both sides that have that beautiful crusty side. That's the whole idea with the smash plate that we're using here in these smash burgers, that we want it to be crusty on both sides. And that's exactly what we've got cooked to a, a beautiful um, all the way through. And again, it didn't take long at all. So that's what we're after. Let's do another quick set of them and we'll uh, throw them on. This time we're gonna add some cheese, but that's what we wanted to see so we could show you what that burger looks like uh, when it's gonna be all nice and crunchy. Cause we put the cheese, you're gonna miss the side of it. All right, uh, so we're back. Let's do some uh, cheeseburgers here. So let's just get a little bit of uh, oil on there. We're just gonna throw those on there just like we did before. This time we're gonna add a little bit of smoky cheddar, which is just gonna add a beautiful little taste. Let's give that uh, a minute, of course. So let's just smash that down here. Again, we want them all in the uniform size so they'll all cook at the same time for doneness. So if you wanna learn any more about barbecuing, how to, how to entertain, how to hospital, hospi have some hospitality with uh, your barbecue, and you want to learn how to do a better barbecue, check us out at Berkey's Barbecue. We do master classes, we teach, we have a hands-on experience, so you get on the tools here, get a feel for what we're doing here today. We've talked about it, but if you want to get on to some of the uh, Weber kettles and other things, then uh, make sure you get in touch with us. Okay, so we're just going to let that crust up, and that's not going to take very long. And again, don't uh, flip the meat, whether it be chicken or beef or whatever you're cooking, until it has had a chance to cook on that one side. If it starts to stick, don't, don't turn it. Just going to wait and be patient on that. So a little trick, a little tip. Okay, that's coming off nicely. Look at that. That's exactly what we want. And then we've got some cheese here. Let's just get that on there. That's gonna melt in no time flat. About the same time that burger's ready, that cheese is gonna be done and it is gonna be ready to eat. We're gonna throw those along with the other burgers that we've been doing here into the um, into the uh, brioche buns, which is probably my favorite when it comes to doing any of these burgers. And I'd say that's how long it took to cook on the first side. The middle side is definitely going to be done. That cheese is saying, take me off, put me in a bun, put me on a brioche bun if you don't mind. That is looking like something you want to serve. How proud would you be to serve that? Mmm, that's finger tasting good. So what we've got here now is a choice of what we can do with this. We can add lettuce and tomato. We can add some of our hot sauces, any one of those to just kick it up a notch. So whatever you like, use the Cully's product. The pickle maze is one of my favorites. We're gonna throw that right on so you get a feel for what that looks like here. It's got a lovely pickle taste. So if you don't have pickles around, just throw some of that on there. Okay. You know what? I know another person is going to want that right there. Maybe me. All right. So there you have it. Little pickle maze. We've got a choice of sauces. Um, we've got beautiful cheeseburgers that are nice and crunchy and crusty and smoky on top of it. Enjoy. From Berkey's Barbecue to your backyard, you're going to love this. Make it happen. All right, our backyard barbecue has come to a conclusion. We've done a beautiful smoked salmon here that's been cured previously. We'll just add a little bit of Caesar dressing along here to freshen that up. So then you've got a nice uh, smoked salmon with uh, lettuce salad with a little Caesar dressing from Cully's. Then we've gone to a, a beautiful rotisserie chicken with garden vegetables that are just uh, uh, simply flavored with oil and vinegar and salt and pepper. And the chicken has been seasoned with the beautiful Cully's rubs and spices. So doesn't that look fantastic and nice and juicy? Then we go to the smash burger. The smash burger, that's what's popular. Everybody loves it right now. Now you know how to do that. Chicken wings, buffalo chicken wings. I mean, if you did nothing else, but maybe just did the buffalo chicken wings, you'd love it. So look at that, just fall off the bone. We've added some ranch dressing in here. Can add that along with it. Mm. 
just no reason not to. And then we get to the beautiful grilled corn with the, the uh, sriracha mayo and the Parmesan cheese. And then we kicked it up a notch. Mm. Sweet corn is the taste of summer. You got to try that. You got to do it. So here we have that beautiful fish that we've smoked. And it's got that, look at that, just fall off the skin like that. Just beautiful. Got the little crunchy bit. Mm, mustard and maple syrup glaze. It's just really, really beautiful. Got a nice crisp taste to it. Goes great on a salad, hot or cold on the side like that. That's a beautiful, beautiful meal. Chicken, we've got the burgers, we've got the wings. You finished it off with the corn. This is a backyard barbecue that you can do. Let me help you do it. If you've got any questions, get in touch with me at burkeysbarbecue.co.nz. Be happy to help you make this happen in your backyard. Bring hospitality to your house. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Cully's Barbecue Series. Thanks again to all our awesome sponsors, Might Attend and Jack Daniels for helping make this happen. Don't forget to subscribe so you can win prizes, including some of the best cooking tools, gadgets, barbecues, accessories, meat and sauce packs, and loads more stuff. Visit cullies.co.nz slash barbecue series for more details. And I'll catch you next week.